Well, we are now nine days, 15 hours, 59 minutes to the presidential elections, where the conversation gets more intense about preparations for the elections, where politicians have their eyes firmly fixed on the prize while other activities go on. Good evening. Welcome to the program. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Well, stay clear of the elections. That's the word from the Inspector General of Police today to would-be troublemakers about the elections. He clearly was amazing words there, saying they would deal decisively with anyone who tries any troublemaking. But in the meantime, politicians appear to have resorted to town hall meetings, stakeholder sessions, on a daily basis now almost, and that's intended to ramp up their campaigns in what can be considered the final lap towards the big day. For much as the PVC remains in the news, you have other matters as well about the cartridges and preparations also. But as always, we will make our rounds with some of our correspondents who will bring us up to the minute with happenings at their location. Now, here are some of those who will speak to us today from their location. Tokba will talk to us from Imo and uh, Dobra Timi will speak to us from Bayelsa. Well, and then we'll also have Bosadi who will talk to us from Oshun State. So they will be updating us on what's happening where they are. Well, don't forget that our social media platforms are available for you to air your views on the program today. As always, you can tweet at us using the hashtag Nigeria2015. But please use the Twitter handle you see on the screen now. Well, if you have comments or questions, do send us an email, and that will be at Nigeria2015 at channelcv.com. But you can also send us pictures through our eyewitness platform. Don't forget, you can download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. When you're done with that, just tap the application on the device. That will show you uh, the instructions to follow, and then subsequently, we will get to hear from you. Well, joining us tonight, Mr. Louis Olayinka is a special assistant on public communications to Governor Ayo Fayoshe of Ikiti State. We also have uh, retired Colonel Hassan Stan Labo, who is a security consultant. And then we'll be joined by Wali Fakwanda, former Attorney General of Ikiti State. He will join us via Skype from our studios in Abuja. Well, for some time now, security has been focused on, either on or off the uh, front lines. And then a lot of talk about security as well. Well, yes, indeed, INEC did also talk about some of the security agencies that they work with in that interagency committee about what to do, how to provide security. And here is uh, some in that big list. It's actually a longer list than this one. But they also have the Office of the National Security Advisor. They get to speak to them uh, occasionally. Police Service Commission, Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian Army, and the National Intelligence Agency. Well, these five we chose to list today. But, you know, afterwards, I did say when that debate raged about how to deploy our security or military for the elections. So about the military, they say, look, that will be only if occasion warrants that. And then the military is there to provide peripheral security. And then they will be on standby for rapid deployment. And their role will be limited to providing INEC logistics support. And that's the comments coming through from INEC. But you know, while the debate raged, and then all of those references made to court judgments about how to go about deploying military, Reminders of the 1999 Constitution, where uh, part of the judgment also made reference to that. Section 218, subsection 1, speaks about the powers of the president as the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federation shall include power to determine the operational use of the armed forces of the Federation. Rwanda well, also went on, uh, the APC made comments, the PDP as well, about the use of the military. Or well, the APC's uh, Gabba Shew says the military has no role whatsoever to play in the conduct of elections and that the services will be better utilized in other pressing areas. He goes on to say that INEC is supposed to take cognizance of the Superior Court's ruling on the role of military during elections, saying the Constitution is indeed very clear on that one. So that's the spokesperson 
of the APC's presidential campaign organization, Gaba Sheo, making comments about that. Thereafter, the PDP also responded and said, well, in the first instance, the federal government has to deploy military for the elections for security purposes, and that the APC has a hidden agenda, didn't understand why they will insist on no deployment of the military. And then they also went on to say, well, uh, the APC wants to intimidate voters and unleash violence on the land. So they think that shouldn't happen and that they are committed, that's the PDP, to a peaceful election. And the government will arrest any person, no matter how highly placed, if they try to form in trouble during the elections. And so that's from Prince Uche Sakonde, the PDP's deputy national chairman, making comments about the elections. Well, after all said and done, remember, there was some debate also on the floor of the House of Representatives. And then the latest one was that that happened in the Senate, making reference to a certain tape, audio, which uh, was alleged to have happened during the Ekiti elections. And so the controversy went on. They uh, predicated certain arguments on that one. In fact, let's even bring you some commentary. This report highlights about security. Hashtag Ekiti State. We were not expecting this type of landslide victory. Although we knew we would win, but this is too massive. That was the immediate reaction of one of the PDP chieftains on the result of the Akiti governorship election. The election result is perhaps a first in the political history of Nigeria. This may be considering that an incumbent governor was beaten not only in his local government area, but in every local government of a state. Pundits and analysts have tried to give explanations to what could have been responsible for this. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INA. The incumbent and APC candidate in the governorship election on the morning of the day the result was announced made a statewide TV broadcast, though not less shocked. If indeed this is the will of the Ekiti people, I stand in deference to your will. The APC challenged a case in court. But the PDP's candidate, Mr. Yodele Fayoshi, emerged victorious. Months down the line, however, a new factor is perhaps changing the narrative as to what really transpired in the Ekiti 2014 governorship election. She's never a few weeks ago, a purported secret audio recording surfaced online. It discloses a purported meeting of some PDP chieftains in the over 30 minute recording. Conversations about the elections, especially as relating to the role of the military, were allegedly largely discussed. Alleged to be present are uh, Mr. Fahoshe, who was then the governorship candidate of the PDP, former ministers for state for defense, Musili Wabanikoro, police affairs Caleb Ulubolade, and Senator Yola Omishere, and a former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Abdul Karim. The PDP leaders are said to be meeting with a then military commander of the 32 Artillery Brigade. Some of the aspects of the recording which raise concerns are first, statement made by Mr. Fayoshi, which reveals there might be some prior meeting staged in Abuja, the seat of power, and links with top officials of the military. People have stopped on and told me he has briefed him. I gave me his number because I never met him before. And I, he told me that he safe hands. He will perform, and if you have any issues, call me. And he told me that I have made it clear to him that you are not have for this election. We agreed in Abuja for that it is to work. And we agreed to a sticker. That any vehicle you see that sticker, they allow that sticker. Another is what may have drawn the umpire INEC into the fray. The, the thing INEC gave to us, soft copy, we now printed everything. So that, he now told me, because they see INEC thing on top of it. They packed all the computers. It took me more than two hours to get this one to release. The intense conversation appears to have slightly shaken the general, and when the then Minister for State for Defense waded in at some point, a clear warning for him to cooperate was given, perhaps to avoid any sad consequence. Don't talk too much. I want you to go and work and deliver for us. Look here. Yes, sir. I am, you can't get promotion without me sitting on top of your... Council. Yes, sir. If I am happy, if I'm a happy man tomorrow night, eh? yes, the sky is your limit. And, and if, I'm not, if, I'm, if I'm unhappy at the same time, I am not here.
Tea Party. I'm here on assignment. The man who claims to have made the recording, Captain Sagir Kali, who is currently on self exile, brings some insight into the meeting. First was how the military personnel were used and how the team, which was specifically marked for the task, was identified. Uh, on the election day, there was banners, hand banners. You see some of our soldiers, you see them with hand banner, purple in color. That anybody with that hand banner we are now free access for movement on the election day. From Channel Television's coverage of the election, people were seen being arrested as military officers ran after others. A close look is perhaps a match with Captain Coley's description of the special officers. Officers with purple handbands. Captain Coley revealed to us that General Momo was deployed specially for the AKT elections a month before the election. As it was perhaps clear, the former commander of the division was not ready to play games. So the man possibly, a month of the election, we, 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 we saw a signal that General Momo is coming to take over his command in 32 Artillery Brigade Abure, while General Tiko should go back and take over his command in Bina, 31 Artillery Brigade. Then when General Momo came in, he told us specifically that, gentlemen, I'm here for assignment. I'm here for special assignment, and you know the assignment is a state election. So you go out to follow me, whatever I said. But immediately we saw the signal, it was clear that maybe General Duco uh, cannot do what they want him to do. That is why he was removed. Now, when Bayoshe and his team now reached the airport to receive the president and his uh, entourage, we are, we are staying together with Obanikoro and his ADC. He told uh, Fayoshe at the airport that see the new brigade commander that we brought you based on your request. From there I was shocked. I said this thing is going to be why this sudden chain of command. For the past three hours, he tell me people that I want to be running in his hometown and they are brandishing God. What does it take you to do this arrest, sir? This is the man referred to in the recording. A member of the House of Representatives, he was marked for arrest. He needed to have been there. He needed to have been in the thick of events and in the run-up to the election 20, 2014 to appreciate this. My 87-year-old man was beaten up because he couldn't go anywhere. He was, he was also there. 87-year-old man. And then they, they arrested, type touching started touching the, the ladies in my house indecently all because of election and more revelations from the officer when we entered a kitty state that is uh, uh, five days to the elections five days to the elections specifically uh, i learned that uh, the whole troops okay the whole troops officers and soldiers they were they handed